Oh, hi, Akram. Thank you. Thank you so much for the presentation. Um, thank you so much for everyone that is uh, participating and attend this uh, webinar. It's, uh, I'm very pleased and very honored for being here. And I just will put this here. And um, thank you so much for spending a little bit of your time with me and actually with us. I, I always uh, mention my colleagues because they are part of uh, everything that I'm doing because we work together. So uh, today I want to talk to you about um, a new device that we've uh, actually developed uh, here in Brazil. And uh, we think that this bracket could help us and help you to get uh, put here uh, to get a little bit more easier kind of treatment of on our patients uh, to be more comfortable and more uh, simplifying kind of technique. So that's why I put I changed a little bit the name of this uh, webinar and I put double slot bracket. A bracket endless possibilities because that is how we think of uh, this device uh, in order to help us. So let me start. Uh, I was kindly introduced by Dr. Akram. Uh, I am from Brazil. I am orthodontic specialist, specialist and co-author of the double sub bracket. And also we have a book that we wrote here that is uh, conceptive, innovative conceptism in orthodontics that talks only about this bracket and some kind of mechanics that we've uh, did with this uh, tool. Uh, and actually it's a, a, a small uh, manual practice of how to use the basalt bracket. And I'm also professor of postgraduate uh, in Orthodontic school here in Porto Alegre. And uh, that is a, a, a town, a city near that I live here. Uh, this is my family. Uh, this is my little daughter, Pietra. I have just one daughter. She have right now two years and 10 months. Uh, my wife and my three dogs that I love so much. I love dogs. And uh, this is the reason that I'm here, the pride, of, the pride of my life, the reason that I'm working, the reason that I'm uh, trying to do everything that I do in my life that is my, my daughter. Uh, and before I start, I want to say that uh, my group and I, uh, along with the Iraqi Orthodontic Society, have a gift for you guys. So this is the ebook that we wrote. Uh, and if you want to get this ebook, you just send an email to this address that is here, uh, just telling me your name and uh, the country that you are and that you attend this webinar today and we will send you this ebook for free, okay? So that is uh, our gift for all the attendees that are here on Zoom or even on YouTube or either in Facebook. Uh, and I want to say that I am from uh, actually Venancio Aires, that is a city from the south of Brazil, on the deep south from Brazil. Uh, it's a small city that has uh, approximately 70,000 uh, people live here. I lived here all my life. I am from, I was born in Brazil, uh, but like I told Dr. Akram uh, before, I am half Arab, I think 51% uh, Arab, my Arab uh, blood, because my parents, they came from Palestine so many years ago, over 50 years ago to Brazil and they established uh, here uh, a residence and uh, they had six children. I'm one of the six, uh, not the, the youngest one. There is another one uh, younger than me, but he already has more than 30 years old. I myself have 37 years old. So when you come to Brazil, please don't forget to send me a message and maybe we can uh, get along and I can introduce you to some places here. Uh, this is some images from Brazil. Uh, actually, we have quite beautiful places here. So all of you are welcome. Uh, and I hope you that we can meet personally uh, sometimes after this all kind of pandemic thing and COVID get passed. Uh, 
Well, let me start talking to you about the idea. Uh, what actually gives us uh, the thought that we could maybe do something in order to try to help not only us, but every kind of orthodontist that want to work in uh, an orthodontic treatment. So I quote Albert Einstein that say, invention is not the product of a logical thought, even though the final product is tied to a logic, uh, logical structure. And it's very simple for me because every idea that we have came from a logical base. Every time that we have any idea, it's came from, it's come from a, a, a thought logical so every time you you trying to invent something uh you think logically how this uh idea could help others so we basically attempt to this kind of um fact and we thought how can we do something in order to help us and help others to manipulate in a so much easier way our treatment uh, and it, the invention itself it's only the device but the whole idea that left behind that it's already exists you'll see that we did not invent nothing uh, just a simple bracket and all the concept of this bracket it's uh, fundamentally by all the historical of orthodontics that already exist so this is uh, this was the whole idea uh, that we came to develop this new kind of device uh, and we achieved a little bit of success on this uh, dream. So I have to talk to you a little bit in a quiet hurry about history because uh, the, all, the whole idea that came out to develop this bracket, you'll see that was established by the history of orthodontics. So uh, I separate three great moments on the history right here in front of you. That is first, the father of orthodontist, Dr. Edward Engel, that came up with the idea uh, after a, a lot of work, he developed the first stageways bracket. And this bracket has in uh, itself a 22 inch slot. It was the first moment on the history that someone uh, like angle, try to control the uh, tooth movement on the three plans. And he thought, how, ki how could he do that uh, uh, by developing something? And he create a bracket with a rectangular slot. At that time, we know that all the, 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 the wires was a gold alloy. So in order to control uh, or trying to control uh, the tooth in a tree, D plan or in the three plans, uh, they have to use a 22 uh, arch wire that was gold arch wire because uh, this arch wire gives them a the, the force needed to control essentially the torque that came up with this rectangular slot. So a lot of years uh, after Dr. Steiner uh, came with the same idea, but at that time, they were using stainless steel arch wire. So it wasn't more necessary using the 22 uh, arch wire of gold. You could use an 18 stainless steel arch wire, rectangular one, 18 per 25, uh, and gives you, and, and this wire, it will give you the same amount of force to control uh, the torque. At that time, Steiner thought, well, I don't need anymore the 22 inch slot in uh, a bracket. So he came with the idea of 18 slots. So at that time, uh, established two points. One, it was the first edgeways bracket that was 22 inch slot. And the secondly, of Dr. Cecil Steiner, the 18 uh, inch slot. And the third great moment on orthodontics, it was uh, resulting by the idea of Andrews that came with uh, to put all the information that we need inside the slot. So here's the other pres the prescriptions. So these are the three first big moments on the history of orthodontics that was trying to give us uh, a little bit more simplicity 
to control our orthodontic biomechanics, okay? So after this time, uh, the second moment that I want to talk to you, uh, it was given by us to Dr. Shuri, that was the first guy that introduced the biometric system. And the biometric system, it's usually known today as the uh, bidimensional technique. That's something that I love so much. Uh, so it was the first orthodontist uh, that came the idea to use two different dimensions in order to treat those cases. And after him uh, came Gianelli, Rinchus, Dr. Epstein, Dr. Epstein, and Dr. Celestino. And all of these guys that you're seeing on the screen, they worked with uh, somehow with the bidimensional technique. Uh, each one of them works with a different way, like Dr. Shudi was working by twisting the wire and making this bio, my dimensional technique uh, only by switching uh, the wire uh, with a twist of 90 degrees. After, uh, after a time, Gianelli, Epson, and Celestino, and Eva Rinchaus came with the idea by placing two different sizes of brackets in the same patient. So the actual thought of the bi-dimensional technique is the use of two different dimensions in the same patients. It's 18 on the front, an 18 inch slot on the front, and the 22 on the back. And there is a lot of advantages uh, by using the bidimensional technique. Uh, my, I, me and myself, I, I love to use the bidimensional technique because uh, you have more control of torque earlier on your treatment. Uh, and either one of the most known uh, treatment that we use the bidimensional technique, it's on the sliding biomechanics because you have the control of the torque on the front and the sliding on the back because when you use the bidimensional technique basically the idea is to control the anterior teeth and to slide to the back so you have more friction on the front and more freedom on the back by using 18 on the front and 22 on the back so all of these authors that you're seeing here in the screen they work with somehow with a different kind of brackets and dimensions uh, using the bidimensional technique. And the third moment that came uh, in our thought by uh, the developing of the, the double slot bracket and something that I really, really love, it's the use of two arch wires at the same time that as we know, it's called pigback technique. And it's a very simple kind of biomechanic because it's the use of two arch wires at the same time. Uh, basically, you want to anchorage your system and the other one will make your uh, biomechanic. So I think everyone that uh, it's looking right now to this webinar maybe once uh, made in your own treatment some kind of this uh, treatment of pickback technique, the use of two arch wires at the same time. But you are going to see right now that normally when you talk about pickback technique, it's a very common thing. When I ask someone that uh, if he used already two arch wires at the same time or the pickback technique, uh, normally 90% of the orthodont, they say yes. And when I ask him in which case they use this kind of mechanic, normally 99% of the answer are the same. Traction a tooth, like traction a canine or some other tooth that it's outside of the arch like you're seeing here. So it's, it's a very common thing when you ask or you, when you think to use uh, two arch wires at the same time, the first biomechanic that came up in your mind, it's basically to put or to level or to align some tooth that it's out of the arch. And that was my thought at the time too. But you are going to see that when you use two arch wires and actually uh, this open a little bit of my mind, when you use two arch wires at the same time with this bracket, we uh, kind of uh, variate a lot and we have a lot of diversity and a lot of, of questions and answers that we have to make. So it's not only to use two arch wires uh, to anchoring and to uh, traction a tooth, but it's more of that. 
you are going to see a lot of cases here, not so much, but two, three or four cases that normally we use in a different kind of way. And at the end, we are going to talk how can we use two arch wires uh, differently that we used to think. Uh, so piggyback technique, it's basically the use of a stainless steel and normally a rectangular uh, arch wire to anchorage our tooth or a group of tooth, that is teeth, to anchorage our system. And on the other side, we have normally a nickel titanium thermal arch wire to make the biomechanic. So it's the use of two arch wires uh, in different alloys. One is stainless steel and normally the other one could be a uh, nickel titanium thermal arch wire, one to anchoring and the other one basically to move uh, the tooth or the teeth that you need. It's a very simple and common thing that we use uh, nowadays and the other past days too. And I came here with this article that was uh, written by uh, all these authors that you are seeing. It's basically an overview, including Dr. Britt Melsing. Uh, and you see here that uh, a continuous arch wire simple uh, system is simple to use and relatively comfortable for the patient, but is statistically indeterminate. That is very important. Since the wire is inserted into a series of brackets, the force generated by the appliance and the forces resulting from the function and the muscle matrices are therefore unpredictable. So when you use continuous arch wire or the arch wire technique, one of the uh, things that we have, it's, it's so undetermined forces that you are, will achieve and it's so unpredictable to know how the, the tooth and the teeth will move along when you use this arch wire. So one of the things that we have to use, or maybe we could use, and a way to limit the side effects and thus improve the effectiveness of continuous arch wire systems is to use two wires simultaneously. This approach is commonly referred to as an overlay system or over arch or it, 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 there's a lot of names like pigback technique and the other. Uh, and it's basically a stiffer wire called the master in this, guy, in, in this, uh, in this uh, kind of treatment. One is so stiffer that normally is the rectangular stainless steel arch wire and used to control the arch form or the anchorage of your arch. Uh, and another, a highly wire that is my nickel titanium thermal arch wire that is called a server that will serve to move our tear, our teeth, to deliver the forces needed for tooth alignment. So this kind of uh, work, it's a very common and easy uh, way to uh, achieve your goals in some kinds of biomechanics. And I love, personally, I really love the use of two arch wires at, them, at the same time. Uh, and another moment of the history of orthodontics that uh, we think of that how could we use into our own developing uh, device, uh, it's obviously the use of a self ligated bracket. That is not something new. Actually, I think uh, it remounts to 1930 with this first bracket, but nowadays it's a very useful thing, uh, the self ligated bracket. I really love self ligated bracket but not because uh, everything that I heard of it, because I really think it's more uh, clear for me. It's more clean, actually, the way of system that I work uh, at, I, it's a higher productive thing with the self-ligated bracket. Uh, and here we have basically two kinds of different systems in the self-ligated bracket. One, it's the passive uh, system that uh, it's basically known because the clip does interact with the uh, arch wire. And on the right side of the screen, you have the interactive bracket that is a little bit different with the passive one because here on the interactive one, we have the clip basically uh, acting along with wire depending of the wire that you are using. So this is two kinds of the system that we have. So after uh, this uh, quite little bit and hurry introduction uh, and by all this information uh, we got to think we got ideas we think how could we use all this information 
and try to get uh, a device that could properly help us by using all this background of orthodontic history uh, and put in one single piece. So we think, we analyze, we made the problems, we came with the, with the solution. Uh, so we try to perform uh, something that could help us by using all this background that I told you before. So like I told you, uh, we use uh, already exist information to create something new, but actually we create only a device. The whole background, the whole knowledge is still there. So uh, like I told Dr. Akram before, it's just a single bracket. It's uh, a simple bracket. It's not something that could put uh, before diagnose and before the treatment itself. But I think when you have in your hands something that could help you to get uh, your objectives more easier, maybe you can use it uh, at your favor. So after a while and thinking, we came with the project, uh, the three of us, Dr. Shuni, <clears throat> Dr. Zuki, and myself. And on 2014, we achieved the international pattern of invention of the double slot bracket. At that time, this pattern was given to us by the self-ligated double slot bracket. It was the first uh, pattern, an international pattern, uh, that, was, that we achieved at that time. And uh, here is a little bit of our residence uh, here in Brazil. Uh, we attend to study students not only from Brazil, but, only, uh, but also from uh, other parts of South America, like Peru. Uh, and we are very proud of them because uh, they are the first classes that took classes from the double slot bracket. And here is uh, the project that we developed. It. From one side, we have the first generation of double slot bracket that is the double slot self-ligated bracket. So we came to the idea of the passive and interactive uh, system in a single piece like you see here. And on the conventional side, we used the idea of Dr. Engel and Dr. Steiner to generate the double slot conventional bracket. So we used the idea of the 22 inch slot and also the 18 slot and we put in the same device. So right now we have not only the self-ligated uh, double slot bracket, but also the double slot conventional bracket. Uh, primarily, I have to say for you, to you guys that this bracket, the self-ligated bracket, it's not on the market nowadays. We took out to improve this device. So we don't have this uh, on the market. We are improving the device. And I think, uh, and of course, because the COVID we are getting this new bracket, I think, on the next year, hopefully, uh, with a better uh, design of the device. And now we have only the double slot conventional one. But why I bring back this bracket? Because uh, two of the cases that I'm going to show you was made by the use of the self-ligated double slot bracket. Uh, we took this bracket uh, for five years, we use this bracket. Uh, and for a year ago, we are using the conventional one. So this one, we generated a lot of uh, a lot of biomechanics by using this bracket. And now we are working with the double slot conventional bracket. And uh, the reason that I give, I, I, I brought to you these two brackets, it's because I want to show you that everything that we've done with the double slot self-ligated bracket could and can be done at the same way with the conventional. The only difference is this bracket here has a clip and this one, it does not. So the only thing that we have to use here is a elastic or metallic ligature, but the sequence of arches, the way that we work, the kind of thing that we obey, it's the very same principle. So uh, the first, project or the first generation of double slot brackets were we call DSL. It's like a double slot self-ligated bracket. 
And the second one that we have nowadays, it's the DSC, or as we call double slot conventional bracket. Uh, and basically what gives us this uh, two systems in the same device, it's the curvature of the clip. So this part of the clip putting with the bracket, it will give me uh, the two system in the same device. This image here will show you exactly what I'm talking about. Because here on the cervical or gingival slot, we have a slot that has the characteristics of a interactive bracket. And here on the occlusal or incisal uh, slot, we have a slot that acts as a passive slot or a passive self-ligated self system. So we have the two systems, the two self-ligated systems in the same device. Uh, and why this occur? It's because this curvature, as you see here, this part of the clip, he is already on the maximum point of the bracket. Uh, and on the other way around, we have here this part of the bracket that could be deflected to the front and he has all this way along to uh, go and go back. And that's why that part or this slot has the interactive system uh, in this device. And this video, you will see what I'm talking about. So if you put two rectangular arch wires at the same time in the two slots, you will see that this uh, arch wire here will never contact the clip and even if he contact, he will not have the force to deflect the clip for forward or backward. So this slot here, it's considered the passive one. Uh, instead of that, if you put the same arch wire here or a rectangular arch wire, 17 for 25, 18 for 25, 19 for 25, uh, he will deliver a force through the clip and the clip because we have all this way long to move the clip will be uh, move forward. And because he have a elastic memory, he will go back. And that's why this slot has the characteristics of an interactive slot. So we have in the same device, not only two slots, but two different system of self-ligated bracket in the same device, okay? Uh, and what is the options that we have when we work with the double slot bracket? So what can we do by using the double slot self-ligated bracket? Well, we can only work with the passive slot. So if you are in love, like I am, by the passive slot, you can, or the passive system, you can work uh, along to all the treatment only using the passive slot. You don't have to use the interactive slot. If you want to work and you like to work uh, with the interactive system, you can work only with one arch wire during the whole uh, treatment by using only the interactive slot. So you can choose whatever slot you want. You can also choose the self-ligated slot or the self-ligated system as the treatment requires. So if you want to use like the, the passive system uh, to align and level your teeth, and once you are finished, you want to use the interactive system to get uh, a little bit more control of torque, you can use it. So you can start with the passive one and you can go to the interactive one. So as the treatment requires, you can choose whatever slot and whatever system you want during whole treatment. And of course, you can use two slots at the same time. You can use two arch wires at the same time because now you have two places to put one arch wire independent of each other. And one of the things that I love so much, you can vary slots. So you can uh, basically variate the slot uh, from one to another to especially vertical movements. We are going to see here uh, a deep by that are correct with uh, variating the slots, okay? And when it becomes of the second generation that we have today, like I told you, we don't have any more the self-ligated double slot bracket uh, yet, but 
what we have today, it's basically the conventional double slot bracket. And differently of the self-ligated bracket, here we don't have interactive system or passive system because we don't have clip. So what differences one conventional bracket to other? It's basically when we talk about one slot bracket, what difference one from another is the size of a slot. So, or you work with a 22 slot or you work with 18 slot. I personally like to use the 18 slot, okay? But uh, the 22 slot also have a lot of adva advantage over uh, the 18 slot. Uh, so everything that you are going to work has advantages and dis disadvantages. So uh, at the same time you are using 22 slot only, you will generate a lot of advantages and you will have a lot of disadvantages. And the same applies to the 18 slot. But once you have the two slots on the same device, uh, like I told you, you can use whatever you want the way that you want. So the idea of the conventional bracket was to put the two sizes of conventional bracket. So we turn the conventional double slot bracket into a bi-dimensional bracket. Uh, here you are seeing the gingival or the cervical slot that has the, the size of 18 per 30. So actually you have here a 18 slot on this slot here. And under it, you have a 22 per 28 inch slot. So you have the 18 here and you have the 22 here. So this is actual, uh, a true bi-dimensional bracket. Uh, and like the same way that we have options to work with the DSL or the, the, the double slot self-ligated bracket, we also have some uh, kinds of thoughts that we can use uh, by working with the double slot conventional bracket. So uh, you can work during the whole treatment using just one slot. It's not obligatory to use the two slots and two arch wires at the same time. This is a very important uh, highlight here. So if you like to use the 22 slot, you can use along the whole treatment only the 22 slot. So if you like me are a fan of the 18 slot, you can use during the whole treatment only the 18 slot. And at the same time, uh, you can work with the bidimensional technique in the same bracket. What is the difference of this bracket, the bidimensional bracket, uh, comparing to the bidimensional case? Because uh, actually when you have one slot with just one dimension, in order to get a bidimensional brackets or bidimensional case, you have to mix brackets. So you have to buy a 22 inch slot set of brackets of 22 inch slot, and you have to buy another set of brackets of an 18 slot, and you have to mix the brackets in the same patient. Uh, actually, there are some companies that sells already a case of brackets of bidimensionals. So they sell basically the set of bracket on the front 18 and on the back 22. Uh, I don't know if everything, every company in the world do that. Here in Brazil, we have one that make this kind of sets of bidimensional bracket. But uh, here, if you are working with a double slot bracket, it's just a kind to position the bracket or even do some bend and you will have at the same time the bidimensional bracket to use whatever you want, uh, like in your uh, sliding biomechanics. Uh, you can use the two slots like the other way uh, that we saw on the self-ligated bracket. You can use the two slots at the same time. Something that I use a lot here is two arch wires at the same moment. But here, uh, one uh, arch wire in each of the slot that I have. And also, you can vary the slots, whatever you want, to vertical movements, okay? Uh, Akram, just if you have any question during the presentation, you can interrupt me and you can ask me, okay? So if you want to stay to the final to make the questions, uh, it's no problem for me too. Uh, I prefer and, to the final, doctor. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. So, and why is the paper of the role of the a bracket into a treatment in orthodontics. Basically, of course, it's biomechanics. And when we think about biomechanics, 
that is a lot of words that came up in our mind uh, because you have to control a lot of things during your biomechanics. Uh, it's important to say that nothing surrogate the diagnosis and the planification. So if we going to put in a scale of importance, the first is diagnosed. The secondly, it's your plan of uh, treatment. And on the third scale, we have the biomechanics. And I love actually biomechanics. I think everyone loves biomechanics. So we have to think in a lot of uh, kinds of issues that could occur during biomechanics. And biomechanics, uh, it's like uh, a Lego system, you know, it's you, you learn as repeatedly you do uh, those biomechanics. So it's a kind of which device you are going to use to achieve that result. It's, it's kind of that. But we have to think, to think something very important. Uh, we are not moving objects. We are not moving things. We are moving tooth or teeth. So we work actually in uh, a biological system applying basically rules of the physics, one or two rules of physics. So we have to understand that the tooth or teeth that we are moving, basically it's inserted and it's surrounded by PDL, bone, cells, arteries, uh, a lot of things. So one of the greatest words that we have to get on a biomechanic, it's control. Control, it's the basic fundaments of biomechanic. If you have control, you are on the total, uh, I'm sorry for the repeatedly word, but if you got this word control on your treatment, you will achieve everything that you need, every goal, every objective without a problem. And even, even if you have a problem during your treatment, your biomechanic treatment, if you have control of it, you will solve it. So I put here, I list four principles or four points that I quote that we have to get into uh, an orthodontic biomechanic. And all these four principles, it's related to control. If we obey these four tiny principles, the, 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 the rate of success, it's going to be like 90 or 100%. So one of the principles that we have to obey in a biomechanic, it's of course, control of anchorage. Every biomechanic, everyone needs anchorage. If you can control anchorage, you control uh, one fourth of your uh, principles of biomechanics. The secondly, they are not from uh, in order of importance, but in secondly, it's the control or tool of or your tooth of or teeth movement. So if you are going to intrude a molar, if you are going to verticalize a molar, if you are going to track a canine, if you're going to retract a group of teeth, you have to understand what happens uh, in each kind of movement that you are doing. So if you have this uh, thought in your mind and how to control the side effect, you will get uh, optimal results. The third, it's control of friction. And here I quote just a little bit of uh, something. Friction, it's one, for me, it's one of the most uh, difficult kind of controlling because there is a lot of factors uh, that uh, has uh, directly uh, engagement to friction. So when we talk about friction, uh, it's not if we need uh, less or great amount of friction. It's trying to understand where and when you are having more or less friction and use this in our behalf. So it's not about less or more friction. It's about when, where, and how much friction you need to achieve your teeth or tooth movement. This is the mainly goal of friction. And like I told you, there is a lot of factors that uh, has um, 
problems or are related to friction. And the four, it's the control of force. Uh, this is so much important because, like I told you, we are doing a force on a tooth or a group of teeth. So you have to manage, you have to control your forces because we are working in a biological system applying force that is physics. So vector of force, resultant of force, and the great problem, the amount of force. We always talked about optional force. What is the optional, for, optional force to, retra to retract or to distalize or to tract or to intrude? So this is the mainly principle, control of force, okay? And like I told you, <clears throat> biomechanics uh, has the explanation uh, on the word itself. So I, don't, I, I think that is not a better word to describe our work uh, that biomechanics, because if you separate these two words, you will have the answer to your question. Bio from biology and mechanics from physics. So when I talk to you and I say that we work in a biologic system and we work applying mechanics, physics, the word itself answer this question. It's biomechanics. So take away from uh, high forces, control your forces, and you will have great biological response in your treatment, okay? Uh, so after saying that, and after presenting you this uh, first double slot self-ligated bracket and the double slot conventional bracket, I will summarize in some cases how we work using this device and how I think this tool, this bracket could help you to do uh, your treatment. Uh, but before that, I have to say that uh, you don't have to work exactly the same way that I do here or that our group do here. Uh, like I told you, it's a quite simple bracket. So uh, I don't want to change your way to work. I want to add something. I want to add the bracket in your way to work. So maybe uh, after you see this webinar, Maybe you will come along with new ideas that I didn't have, and this will open uh, a lot of more my ideas to use of the double slot bracket. So one of the cases, the primary case that I always show, it's uh, this patient. This patient basically came up with a molar that was extruded here, the 16, and she wants to use an implant, but we don't have uh, interocclusal space. So normally you see that she has a great occlusion, a class one occlusion, a great overbite, a great overjab. And the only problem, one of the problems, is that she has the 16 uh, over erupted. So what we have to do, and you see here the occlusal plane of the patient, it's quite under, but it's basically here, and it's a little bit uh, extruded, but it's sufficient to not put a implant uh, on the lower arch. So one of the scenario that we have to treat a uh, extruded molar, of course, it's by using, and this, I think it's a more, more simpler way uh, and uh, effective and very uh, kind of unique uh, way, it's to use uh, mini screws, you know? Uh, and either if you use directly miniscules, because in that case here, if I don't want to use fixed appliance, the best way it's by using miniscules. So we can put two miniscules here, basically, and one to the palatal area, and by using either coil springs or uh, elastic chains with the a certain amount of force, we can intrude the smaller with no problem. Or another simpler way, it's by using just two mini screws, one on the buccal area and the other one on the palatal area like this. So by the using of the elastic chains, you will have uh, basically the intrusion of uh, this molar. What are the points that are so advantageous by using uh, mini screws? Well, first, 
uh, you don't have to use fixed appliance. In that, that case, you just by using two uh, mini screws, you can solve the case. The second one is that you have total control of your anchorage because they are uh, a skeletal anchorage. There is no problem at all. The third point, it's by using those two kinds of ways of uh, mini screws treatment and intrusion of molar, you have the total control of your intrusion. You have basically an excellent uh, intrusion of molar. So you are controlling every kind of aspect that we talked before. These are all advantageous points when you use mini screws to intrude molars. But let me tell you about some disadvantages that I think uh, maybe could occur when you use mini screws. The first one, it's basically we depend on the patient to make it a good hygiene from this device. Because once the patient don't have this good hygiene, what is going to have, it's going to generate it a inflammatory process and maybe the minuscrut will fail. The second problem, it's normally you have to get uh, a great space between the roots, okay? So if you don't have, uh, it's basically almost impossible to put minuscrut there. The, the third point, it's that one. Uh, if you are going to put a mini screw here, it's more difficult than put here because he, normally the patient doesn't have a great extent uh, muscle uh, long way to, to put the mini screw. So this is, uh, it's quite a, a minimum of uh, disadvantages, but uh, the, the technique itself, the, the place. And the fourth uh, point, it's the, the, the height of the, the placing of the, the, the mini screws. So you have to get a little bit of height and this depends of course of the anatomy of the area that you're going to put uh, this mini screw. So I believe that mini screw is the best anchorage ever. Actually, any skeletal anchorage is the best anchorage, uh, orthodontic anchorage ever. But uh, even so, if you have some kind of disadvantages, uh, this best device ever could fail. So it's just points that I wanted to quote, not to say that it's uh, worst or not, but just to quote, and I think the, the worst part, the worst part of mini screws is the take care of the hygiene from the patient. This, I think it's uh, one of the great rates of failure. It's because basically the patient doesn't have a good hygiene. So every time we can choose not to use something else to treat our patient, I think it's better. So I have a, 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 a mold here, like it's uh, less is more. So as less as accessory that I could use and solve the problem of my patient, it's better. And you have a, f a fifth point here that I quote, that basically I had patients that doesn't want to use miniscrew. They, they, they doesn't want to use miniscrew. They told me, listen, I don't want to put this in my mouth. So it's, of course, it's a, a low number of patients, but maybe it will occur with you. So you have to get in your, in your mind uh, uh, a plan B to make this kind of treatment. So uh, how can we use? Well, it's not possible to pass a uh, continuous arch wire into a extruded molar because we know that's going to happen, ex extrude the other uh, teeth. So normally what we use, it's like a piggyback technique, two arch wires at the same slot and here, is an example just of a single slot bracket by using two arch wires. One arch wire is the 17 per 25 stainless steel. That is the main principle arch wire that we have to use to anchorage our system. And the other one, it's quite simple, a round nicotinium thermal arch wire that we're going to intrude the molar. So it's a quite simple way to do with two arch wires at the same time as you see here. Uh, and here is an image uh, with two arch wires in the same slot. And you will see that we are using uh, this rectangular arch wire is that one, 17 per 25, and this is the 14 thermal activated arch wire. So the first problem is that you are going to get a high friction of uh, these two arch wires in the same uh, slot. 
in that scenario, this high friction doesn't have any problem because you know the let me that here because as you know as the molar goes under or upper this arch wire will slide to the back so the less friction you have here it's no problem and once you have the tube here you don't have any friction that uh, could make it impossible to slide so if you have here a high friction between two arch wires it's not a problem even it's good because it's more anchorage that you are going to producing but the problem becomes when you get a little bit of intrusion of the molar and once you have to change your 14 arch wire to another or another arch wire more larger because the 14 it doesn't have more potential of uh, intrusion so what do we do here it's replace the 14 for a 16 because we need to intrude the molar a little bit more but once you use the 16 what happens is that because geometrically we have just a 22 inch slot the 17 for 25 and the 16 doesn't fit in the same slot so uh, you cannot use the 16 but you had to so in order to use the 16 you have to change or replace your anchorage system, your anchorage arch wire. And I mean the 17 for 25 stainless steel arch wire. And that becomes a problem because we know that the 17 for 25, it's a high uh, stainless steel arch that maintain our uh, stability. If you use anything uh, above that or under that, you may lose your anchorage, but you know, you have to use two slot, two arch wires. You are using two arch wires, and normally, to fit these two arch wires inside the slot, normally the orthodontist up uh, make an option to an 18 of uh, stainless steel, a round stainless steel arch wire. So if you see here, you are reducing this arch wire here, the 17 for 25, to an 18, and once you do that, you may you may lose a little bit of anchorage because first you don't have a great stability of your 18 stainless steel arch wire. The second problem is that the molar intrusion is one of the most complex uh, movement that we have because we are putting a tooth into a bone. It's an unphysiological movement. So uh, the movement itself, it's hard. Okay, it's more easy to extrude rather than intrude. So if you don't have a great stability, you will lose anchorage. So this is what is happening. Uh, so one of the biggest problem that I will quote a lot here and I'm, I'm telling you, it's when you use piggyback technique or when you use two arch wires in the same slot, you don't have more diversity of uh, the using of two arch wires. You just have some one or two options. It's like the 17 for 25 to anchorage and the 12 and the 14 to make the movement. Over that, you cannot use the 17 and the 16 or the 18 uh, on the same slot because geometrically they doesn't fit. So I think this is one of the highest problem when you use two arch wires into the same slot. So by using the double slot bracket, uh, it's the same sequence, the same arch wires, the 17 for 25 and the 14 thermal. The only difference here is that you have two places to put each arch wire in uh, each slot. So you have one slot for the 17 for 25 and another one to your thermal activated arch wire. So you have independent slot to independent arches. So what we use here is the same principle. 17 for 25 SS and a 14. And here we have the figure of uh, the image of the uh, double slot bracket with those two arch wires. And what you're doing here, it's basically intruding your molar with a thermal activator arch wire that will give you the force controlled because you are using a thermal activated arch wire. So you are using a constant and gradative force. Okay. Uh, and here, you avoid your uh, loss of anchorage because your mainly principal arch that is the 17 for 25, it will establish a good anchorage. And once this 14 will end 
uh, the total potential of intrusion, you will replace him to a 16. So what you're here seeing here on the right side of the screen is that I'm just replacing the 14 for the 16. I doesn't move, I doesn't place, I doesn't, I, I, I don't do nothing with the 17 per 25. The 17 per 25 will start my bone mechanic as my mainly uh, arch wire of anchorage, and he will still there to I fin till I finish this intrusion. So the only arch wire that I will replace is the thermal uh, uh, activated arch wire. So I place the 16 over the 14 and I get a little bit more intrusion. And if I uh, still need a little bit of intrusion and I requires a rectangular thermal activated arch wire, I also could use. So here you see that I'm using two rectangular arch wires at the same time. So I finish here in that case, a, the intrusion on the molar with two rectangular arch wires, something that is impossible to achieve in a single slot bracket. So in the clinical case here, like I told you, the patient uh, got option to use the, the fixed appliance because she wants to correct a little bit of rotation of uh, premolars and everything. So we choose to use the uh, double slots of ligated bracket because we think uh, that by using two arch wires we could intrude this molar without the using of uh, mini screws. So what we've do, uh, what we've done from the first moment, it was bond all the brackets, making the alignment and the level of all the teeth. And once you have all level and all aligned, we start the uh, intrusion of the molar. And very important not to use nothing on the molar. So you see here that I didn't place any tube here till I get my uh, mainly principal arch wire that is my 17 per 25. And I want to give you guys a quick tip uh, that I think very, very important because I love to use second molars uh, in 98% of my treatment. Uh, it, I think it's a precious tooth and we do not have to neglect these two. Second molars are very important for us, so many kinds of treatment. Uh, it's because I use the second molar normally to get a little bit of expansion, dental velar expansion, uh, because normally he's a little bit more buccally. I use him to get a little bit more expansion of the arches somehow. Uh, and the second molar is a very benefit tooth when you know how to use it. The problem of the second molar is that he is differences himself to the other tooth or teeth because he is, has a total atypical position. Uh, all the, the, the teeth from the first molar to the central incisors, they have a tipping of the root to the distal and a little bit of tipping of the crown to the mesial. This is the normal thing or parallel or a little bit more uh, tipped the distally the root. And the second molar, it's very opposite because the second molar, it's quite uh, opposite to the, all the other tooth uh, that are in front of him because the second molar has the root to the mesial and the crown to the distally. So he is a little bit this, the, 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 the root is it's mesially and the crown is tipped to the distal. And normally when we try to correct this tipping of the molar, giving a mesial tip of crown, normally we may extrude the second molar. And in some cases, you will increase the vertical dimension. And if the patient has a big, high vertical dimension, it's not indicated. So how I use the second molar uh, often in my 90% of my cases, it's very simple. You see here that when I pass through the premolar to the molar, you see that I don't have any deflection of my arch wires. In that scenario, I will not make any vertical movement of the second molar. Of course, here we don't have a problem because we don't have uh, a lower molar to contact the, the, the upper one. But in, in, in the most scenario, we have the, the, the lower molar. And if we do this kind of extrusion or even the correction of this uh, tipping of the second molar, we may extrude the distal uh, cusp of the, mo of the molar and he will contact prematurely the lower one and will increase a little bit the, the vertical dimension. So 
we have to put the tube as passive as we could. Okay, so think on passive way. Think that the wire is passing through the second molar without any deflection, anyone. So it's like you're seeing here. You're seeing two arch wires here and it's not been deflected at all. So it will not happen anything to this second molar. And one of the things that is very uh, difficult, it's because the second molar is a posterior tooth. So it's hard to get to this tooth. So the tip actually here, it's by the use of right instrument. This is a, a clamp, a curved clamp, specifically for tubes, okay? And we use the retractor Minnesota that uh, is used for surgery. And I use basically the retractor to make the retraction of the, the lip of the patient just on one side. And you see here, how uh, is the amount of vision that I have? So you see that I see actually the first and the second molar very great, okay? And by using the clamp, uh, the, the, the curved clamp to put the tube, you enter from front to the back and it's like this. So it's very, very uh, easy to place the second molar with the use of the right instrument. So by using this retractor and this clamp, I think you can bond anything you want, uh, either first, second, or even a third molar uh, if you need, okay? So this is a quick tip for you. And right now, what I'm doing here, as you see, I am using here the 17 port 25 stainless steel arch wire that is inserted here, it's my uh, gingival or central or cervical slot. That is because it's my self-ligated bracket, it's the interactive one. But I will not quote uh, interactive or passive, I will say gingival or incidental, okay? To be more simplifying. So I'm using here the 17 port 25 stainless steel arch wire like my main arch wire to anchoring all my teeth. And under it, I'm using a 14 uh, Nico titanium thermal activated arch wire to start the intrusion of my molar. So uh, I do that and I send my patient home. Uh, a month later, the patient come back and what I do is just, I change the slots. You see here, the, this is the photo that I start on the first month. Uh, after one month, this molar was intruded a little bit and the 14 was passive. So he didn't have force to create a little bit more intrusion. Uh, even if I use a 16 thermoactivated arch wire, he will not be deflected because the tooth uh, was a little bit more uh, intruded. So I just change my slot. So the 17 port 25 that was here on my central slot, I pass to the occlusal slot. And the 14 that was in my occlusal slot, I pass to above or to the central slot. And when I've done this kind of variation or changing of the slot, I generated a little bit of deflection here and I potentialize my same 14 arch wire. So I'm using the same uh, arch wire, but with a little bit more deflection. And in this case, I increase a little bit the intrusion of the molar. And here I just, and the intrusion with a 16. I didn't have to use a, a rectangular arch wire in that case because the intrusion was uh, so tiny intrusion, like I think two millimeters, or maybe three, I don't know. So I used just two arch wires, a 14 and a 16. Uh, and once you have this ready, you remove all the, 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 the arch wires and you start to use only one. So this from this moment on, you start to use like a regular orthodontic treatment by one arch wire. So you use your sequence that you want. Uh, we use a 16, then an 18, then a 16 for 22, and you finalize with uh, the, the, the arch wire that you like. Uh, of course, it depends of the slot that you are using. But after you finish your treatment, you continue your treatment uh, just with one arch wire, okay? So here is the intrusion 
uh, made it, okay? And I will uh, get a little bit further because I know that will be an a question of that. Uh, when we use this kind of treatment, uh, normally we can, we will generate a, a little bit of uh, a buccal movement of the molar because we are working on the crown and the center of resistance is far away from the uh, point of application of force. So it's uh, a kind of normal that every time that we work far away from the center of resistance in this scenario, in this case of the intrusion of molars, it may be occur a little bit of uh, a buccal movement, okay? So we can solve this problem by uh, two different ways. The first one uh, is by using a tube with prescription. If you use ROT, if you use MBT, if you use Andrews, or if you use any tube with prescription, it will get to the back as long you put the, the proper arch wire to give the torque prescription that is on the tube. This is the normal easy way. And you saw that I use here an edgewise tube. So it's zero torque and it's zero angulation. So in, in my case, what I have to do if I am using a edgewise tube, zero torque and zero angulation, uh, I have to bend, I have to give a manual torque on the wire, like you see here. Oh, sorry, here. I give a manual torque or a negative torque, a palatal torque. And once you do that, you generate a force to the back, to the palatal area, and you correct your uh, position of your molar. Okay, so uh, it's very simple, it's very uh, easy. Okay, so this is the first question. The, the main issue of this uh, case that I will say to you is that I've done all the intrusion. Sorry, here I am, let me, okay. I've done all the intrusion by using only uh, a bracket and two arch wires, okay? So it wasn't really necessary in this case the use of anything else like a transpalatal arch or even a mini screws, nothing, just two arch wires at the same uh, time in independent slot. Uh, and here I got the control of anchorage, I've got the control of my tooth movement, I've got the control of friction, I've got all the principles that I told you uh, before with just uh, three components, two arch wires and uh, a bracket and it was uh, my, my patient said that was very simple she doesn't uh, felt any pain so the force that I put it was very uh, like I, I think there was very biological because I didn't measure I just uh, was uh, seen by the deflection so uh, it was so comfort and so simple to do that kind of mechanic uh, that in that case, I didn't use anything. So like I told you, less is more. As less accessories that I could use and solve my problems, for me personally, it's better, okay? I didn't depend on my patient in nothing. Of course, she had to hygiene all the brackets. She, she had to make a good hygiene of the, uh, sh her gum. She had to, to, to take care to not debond any bracket, but uh, it's a common and frequent uh, case that the patient has to take care of the fixed appliance. So it's not uh, some unusual thing like, listen, you have to take care of this uh, mini screw by using any antiseptic or something like that. Uh, so every time you put something else uh, and, you, and the patient have to get a little bit more care, uh, it's uh, the rate of unsuccess maybe will increase. Okay. Uh, so the second case that I'm going to show you, it's basically the traditional case. And I, 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 I bring two cases, basically the same cases uh, of different patients of traction of canines. And why I bring two traction of canines? Because this one was made by the self-ligated double slot bracket, like the first intrusion case. And the second uh, case of canine traction I made by using the DSC or being the, the conventional double slot bracket. So I, I put these two cases along 
because I wanted to show you that the, the, the differences between one case and the other one, it's just a matter of one uh, piece of thing that you are going to use differently one from another. So in this case here, you see that the patient, it's a young patient, uh, have a, a, a beautiful smile. And you see here that he has, she has actually uh, the lack, the absence of the canine, but her occlusion is quite perfect. You see, uh, class one of molar, class one of uh, premolars on the both side, a great uh, overjet and overbite a little bit, uh, rather inclined a little bit. So, but uh, main of all, she is, has a great occlusion and we have to take care to not lose or miss this occlusion. So this is uh, her intro oral photo, occlusion once. You see that she has here uh, a little bit of crowding and moderate crowding, uh, even less than moderate. And here she have the deciduous canine. Uh, and if you see here, I really believe that the canine is here and he, he's really here. But one of the tip, another tip that I, I say to you, never, never track a canine without a CBCT, please. Uh, today, it's a very common uh, to get CBCT for everything. Uh, we don't have a high cost of this exam and the insurance that this exam gives us to know exactly the position of the canine, it's so uh, useful. And uh, regardless of that, we also got to know actually the position of the canine related to the other tooth uh, that are surrounding of this uh, impacted teeth, uh, tooth, I'm sorry. So here I have the panoramics and I see that it passed a little bit for, from the lateral. It always uh, taking place here on the root of the central incisors. And on my CBCT, I see that he's from palatal area. He has a little bit of uh, intimacy with the the root of the lateral, so I would take care when I do this kind of movement. And every time that you have this positioning of the canine, normally it's uh, very common that after you do all your alignment and level uh, and you do the placing of your uh, device that you are going to use to pull out this uh, canine, it's very important to know the intimacy between this canine and the root of the lateral. Because if you try, sometimes if you try to put this canine into his place directly, you may occur uh, a risk, you have a risk to make a resorption of the lateral. So uh, frequently we use some uh, accessory in this, uh, in this image I used a uh, ATP, but you can use also a mini screw, and we pull out the canine to the back. And once he is far away from the root of the lateral, then we put him to his own place. And that's how we have to do. So in order to see this intimacy, the, the, the proximity of the canine with the, the root of the lateral, it's very important the use of the CBCT. So here it's a very uh, common thing that we have to use. So in this scenario, this, uh, in this case here, uh, I use a, a, a transpalatal arch in order to make the first movement on the example. And the secondly, I, I use the, the, the arch wire here to pull the canine to his position. Uh, I thought that I had to use the same uh, biomechanic in this patient. So I align, I level the patient, all the, all the teeth. I use the open, I'm sorry, I use an open coil spring here, but this coil spring is an open coil spring. It's just passive to this place only to maintain the space to the canine. I also could use a stops, crimpo stops here to not get moved this tooth to the area of the, the canine. So after I get uh, a great alignment and a great leveling. And I have the uh, 17 port 25, as I told you, that is my uh, arch wire that I choose to put and establish anchorage of my unity system. I start 
to uh, track the canine. And uh, every time that I'm doing this kind of treatment, uh, a month or a month, two months uh, before I do the traction, I request to the surgeon the bonding, the placing of the accessory uh, of the canine. Because uh, it happens to me uh, a lot of times that uh, once I request one month or two months earlier that I'm going to begin the traction, normally, because of the, sur the, the surgery, the canine goes uh, a little bit more of the, uh, the palatal area. So it's going to be a little bit more uh, comfortable to do all the biomechanic. So what you see here, actually, I start the traction of canine and he was already on the mouth of the patient. So it was very easy for me because I knew that the root was here and he was a little bit far away from the canine. So I choose to uh, position the canine directly to his place. And in this case, I use also the self-legated bracket and I use the 17 for 25 here to establish an anchorage. Uh, and here I start with the 16 uh, thermal activated arch wire. And one tip that I'm going to give to you here, guys, is that uh, normally when you talk about force, amount of force, uh, uh, we, when we use uh, thermal activated arch wire, we have to take care to do not to do some great deflections because of two things. Uh, as more deflection you, you do, more force you are generating. And the second problem, when you do higher deflections that you will cause here, what we call notching. That is a big high friction on those areas. And because the tooth has to go to this position and the arch will go back to his uh, natural form, this arch wire here has to slide to the back. And as more friction I generate, uh, worse is the sliding, okay? So try to do a little bit and less deflection ever, okay? So less friction, less force, less deflection, please. Uh, so here I start to use uh, the 16, and once I get the canine on the mouth of the patient and I have the opportunity to put a bracket, I will put a bracket because at the first moment I, I can uh, generate and, and, and position, well position, uh, start to make the rotation of the, the canine and all this stuff, it's better for me. So what you're seeing here is that once the canine was in her mouth and I put the canine, I couldn't use the same continuous arch wire. So what you're doing, what you're seeing here is the continuous 17 per 25 stainless steel arch wire, okay? So once the, the canine came up uh, and show himself and I put, I placed a bracket, uh, the problem was that I couldn't use the same 17 per 25 because if I pass through this lateral to the premolar, the bracket will contact the uh, arch wire. So you have two options here. You see here, if I try to pass the continuous arch wire here, he will contact, or even if he doesn't contact this bracket, it will limitate my movement of the canine. Because once I'm trying to rotate the canine, the bracket will get in contact with the arch wire and will limitate uh, even uh, uh, will not uh, be able to move because of the contact of the bracket and the arch wire. So you have two options. The option A, it's to make a bypass here. So you do a 90 degree bend here, 90 degree bend here, and another here, and you get through the premolar. So you have the establishing the same continuous arch wire, but with a relief, a bypass uh, arch wire here in order to avoid this contact. Or what I choose were to segmented the arch. So I segmented here and I segmented here. So I have a piece of 17 per 25 in this area and another piece of segmented 17 per 25 stainless steel arch wire from this lateral to this molar and a continuous second 16 thermal activated arch wire. So from now on, I just have to uh, replace this arch wire till I get the final position or the better position of
the canine. So what you're seeing here, it's the buccal surface of the canine. His is the palatal area. His is the distal side of the canine. So I have to rotate this uh, canine and extrude a little bit. Uh, and here I'm doing that by the deflection, I am rotating this canine. And here I have the canine a little bit uh, better than uh, before. A little bit of diastema here occurs because of a little bit of flaring of the, the those two centrals and, and tipping. And once you have this uh, condition, uh, it's a way to align and level your teeth. So from now on, it's just sequence of arches. And at the end, the final finishing, like uh, torque and uh, a little bit of uh, best finishing of the patient. So from now on, it's the ABC of orthodontics. So the, 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 the complex uh, face that was my uh, biomechanic, it was literally uh, concluded. So right now it's just a line level, give torque and finish the case uh, as well as we could do. So I always, before I, I took out the, the, the fixed appliance, I request a panoramic to see, of course, the, the parallelism of the roots and also to see if that doesn't happen anything to my lateral here. Uh, I was very scared, but uh, thank God it doesn't have nothing. And in that case, I finish uh, after almost two years or less. I, I, I really don't remember, but in that period of time. And you see here that I maintain the class one of the patient uh, with a big smile. Here is her photo. I used here a fixed uh, retainer because on cases that I have a little bit of diastemas and I will uh, close, uh, I have a little bit afraid that the patient doesn't uh, use the retention, the removal retention. So for more security in such some cases, not too much, but a few cases I use just on the lateral to lateral, a fixed retain retainer, okay? And here is the first photo of the, the documentation and here, she is with her smile. And something that I, every time I show in this case, uh, it was, it is what is generated when you control your force. Uh, it's this. You see here that the canine from the left side has a great periodontal insertion and you see here that the canine that I tracked on the right side has basically the same amount of periodontal insertion here, the gum here, and here they are as, as, as quite as similar. So why I, I, I have this result on this patient? Because of, uh, I, was, uh, I will use the term biological force, okay? Uh, because we try to use uh, the requiring force and more biological force ever. So every time you use uh, the, 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 the right amount of force, you will get this result. And the other way around, it's also, it's also true because if you use uh, a improper force, what is going to happen in this case normally is that you will track the canine but only the tooth and not all the dental velar complex. So at the end, you will have a, a big crown from one side and the other one, it will be uh, like this, correct. And the tooth that you were making a great uh, amount of force will extrude only the tooth. And uh, aesthetically, it's not good. And even if you want to do a periodontal uh, surgery maybe will not have the success because you just uh, brought out only the canine and not all the complex, the dental alveolar complex that has along the bone. So it's very important to maintain a, a high quality of force during the uh, this kind of uh, mechanics. And actually you can measure or you can see, and if you are seeing without measuring, I think the best, the best way 
to see if you are doing or not. It's the amount of deflection that you generate when you use your uh, thermoactivated arch wires, okay? So don't use high deflection. Use less and soft deflection on your thermoactivated arch wire. This serves not only for traction, for any kind. Even if you are aligned and level your cases, use soft forces. Okay, so, and this is the second uh, traction of canines. Uh, this case is not mine. He is not finished. It's from a colleague of mine that he used the double slot conventional bracket. And I just put here to show you how we manage the same mechanic with a different bracket, also with two slots, in that case, the conventional one. So the patient was uh, young. So she has here the deciduous tooth, the molars. My colleague waited to the eruption of all teeth. And once she get the old teeth, uh, she didn't get the eruption of the canines. Uh, maybe a year later from this photo to this one. Uh, and you see here the right canine, it's a little bit better than the uh, left one. So this one, we have to take a lot of cares in order to not generate any issue on the lateral, on the root of the lateral. So here is basically the tomography, the CBCT. Here is the fixed appliance, the conventional one you see here. So he's aligning and level, leveling all the teeth. You see that I have a little bit of uh, space here on the both sides to the canine. I have some diastems here that I could use to achieve a little bit more space by using uh, open coil springs from the both sides. And I can close a little bit these diastems and achieve a little bit more space to the canines. And the, the sequency of this case and the other one, it's the same, uh, it's the same way. Like uh, here, you are doing the surgery, okay? So when you have uh, the possibility to start uh, your mechanic, you start, but always remember that we are using a stainless steel rectangular arch wire here. That is my 17 for 25. Uh, and I'm doing here the uh, traction of canine. So the, the difference here, if you see, it's here. I'm going to show you. Uh, because we want to manage our friction, uh, you see that if I put a elastomeric ligature on this wire here, I will create a barrier because once you do the deflection of the canine and the canine go to this position, this arch wire here has to slide to the back. So as less friction we have from the posterior side, better. So we change the ligature here, the elastic ligature for metallic ligature to reduce the friction. So this is the way that we manage friction in this, uh, orthodontic conventional bracket by uh, changing, replacing one elastomeric ligature for other, okay? So this is the sequence of the case. You see here that I'm doing this job with a Nyko titanium is the same one, 16. Here is the 17 for 25. Here I am doing the right way in order to get the canine uh, far away from the lateral. So I'm using here a, uh, elastic chain, okay? And I, I'm contrapointing the moment of rotation of the premolar here by using this uh, stainless steel rectangular arch wire that gives me a, a lot of anchorage. And also I'm using stops here that prevent that he goes to the distal area here, to the mesial area and rotate. So uh, the, the stainless steel 17 for 25 uh, has the establishing uh, proper maintenance of anchorage of this tooth, trying to avoid this rotation. And also uh, it will be helpful the use of the stops, but the stops are not needed as much as the 17 for 25. So I'm going to go a little bit faster because we have the time almost exploding. Uh, and the sequence is like the same, just using uh, two arch wires. And here I put two photos. Take a look, it's the same photos. Here is the first one that he used uh, a ligature to traction to, to, did it, to the distance, the canine. 
And you see here, here is the first photo as he finished this uh, appliance. And on the next month, before he took everything out, you see here that once the, 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 the arch wire comes to the right place, uh, he has to slide. So this is less friction. Once he got sliding to the back, this will uh, get on the premolar. So this is how we manage less friction on the system, okay? So this canine is already on his right place. We start to pushing this one. And right now it's the same thing here. All the teeth are with ligatures and this one with the last uh, with metallic ligature. Here is a little bit better. Here you see the ligature, metallic ligature trying to avoid a little bit of uh, less friction. And what we have now, it's uh, a kind of almost the 100% canine. Uh, Akram, I'll show you the last case. I think it's the, yes, it's the last, last case. I know our time is running out, but I cannot. I cannot end my presentation without this case that is uh, a super case. I think uh, it has this case and all the other ones I, I will not make, I hope I'll make better, but let's see. So this patient basically, I will show you, this is, the, these photos are not right, okay? Uh, she doesn't bite like that. Actually, she, she doesn't know how to bite. So uh, you see here that has, she has a triangular form of arch and she has also a extruded uh, anterior incisors, the four, okay? So uh, on the cephalometric, you see that she has a big, big high protrusion of the superior anterior tooth, teeth. And here is how she bites. So you see that she has a lot of overjet, okay? And she has, uh, on that photo you can't see, but that one you can. And she has the, intru uh, the extrusion of the four uh, anterior lower incisors. So the option of treatment here was by extracting two uh, premolars in order to retract the anterior uh, segment uh, and to intrude the four uh, lower incisor by using the double slot bracket. So we start by extracting the two premolars, placing the brackets and I am aligning the upper and aligning the lower. Here I'm using 212 thermoactivated arch wire that is uh, part of my sequence of arches. And that moment is the only moment that I use two arch wires to align and level. It's 212s, okay? Uh, on the upper one, I used a round arch wire, also a 12, uh, in one of the slots. It could be here, upper or lower, it doesn't matter. Uh, and the thing is that I, I go until I get all these uh, lower brackets level each other, and I will use a 17 for 25 here, and I will intrude this one. And on the upper one, I will make the retraction. So what we see here, it's aligning and leveling. Uh, here is a photo of the excess of wire as I started the, the, the retraction of the anterior teeth, okay? And here, once I get this 17.5, I start the intrusion of the lower incisors. So I use here, as you see, the 17.25 on this slot, and this one is a 12 thermoactivated arch wire. And you see here that I put, uh, it's getting out from this slot here, that is the upper one or the incisor one, and it's getting in on those teeth on the central slot. I have also a available slot here, but I didn't do, I didn't use this slot. I used the under it. Why? Because I, I do not want to generate uh, high deflections. Uh, you, you know, it's a very hard uh, intrusion mechanic and also the rate of uh, resorption on those teeth are very high because they are thin roots. So as uh, less force, more secure you will be. So I use uh, this uh, arch wire from this slot to this slot and I have already available another slot if I need it. So 
I go on and you see on the upper one, I am doing the retraction and the lower one I'll do, I am doing the intrusion. Here is a proximate photo and you see that uh, from this photo here, okay, you see that I get the intrusion when the, the arch wire is passive here. So it doesn't matter if I use here a 16 and 18, any, any uh, arch wire here, he will be passing passive. So he doesn't have force to intrude anymore. So what we've done from this one to the other one, it's that we pass through, see, from this slot to this one. So like I told you, I create a little bit more of deflection and a little bit more of force, and I'm getting intrusion of this uh, lower incisors. Here I do a little bit of bypassing in order to not get in contact with the bracket. And the only thing that I have to do on the lower is as uh, much as the lower incisor intrude, I have to change my arch wire, okay? On the upper, I am retracting. You see here that I almost doesn't have much uh, space. It's almost finished. You see that it has a little bit different uh, anatomy here. Here I'm continuous to make the right proper uh, sliding biomechanics by uh, closing the space. And on the lower, I just remove my uh, stainless steel arch wire and I am doing only the alignment and level of this patient. So here she has a little bit of a space that I, we have to close. Uh, this was the beginning. This was uh, on the moment that we have uh, a lot of intrusion but not quite uh, ready. And here it's almost ready. At that time, the patient got, uh, actually she thought she was pregnant. She doesn't know she wasn't to be pregnant. So I talked to her, listen, I need uh, that you do a new documental photos and SAFs and everything because I have to uh, record this uh, treatment. So I asked her and she made, but uh, because she was very excited, she wants to uh, get uh, out the fixed appliance she wants to remove. Uh, I should give a little bit more torque on this lateral, I believe, so to get a little bit more a great finishing. But from this point to this point, I think it's a little bit better with uh, extraction of premolars, the close of the two uh, spaces from upper uh, on the upper arch and on the lower arch, I think we get what we achieved that is the intrusion of the four lower incisors. Uh, here is uh, the side uh, vision. Uh, because she has a, a, a bad anatomy here and the decay from this tooth, I put a little bit of composite here to try to not to close this uh, space uh, in order that her after a while she make the restoration of this tooth. So. Uh, it was like uh, a, a, a maintaining of the space with a, a, a composite. Uh, I, I had to take these photos because, uh, like I told you, she was she was pregnant. So I'm sorry for the quality. Okay, it was removing uh, at the same day I, I took these photos, uh, but I I had to because uh, if I don't, I maybe I lose the case. Uh, here is the beginning and the ending. And here is the radiography, periapical first, and when we finish basically the intrusion. And here is the CEF uh, still with the, the brackets because like I told you, she was pregnant, uh, tried to be pregnant one, and I didn't want to miss uh, because uh, maybe the, 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 the doctor here will not uh, get the liberation to make if it uh, was confirmed that she was pregnant. So. Uh, we took a little bit uh, earlier that removing the, the braces. So you see here that we could position the, the upper uh, protraction or protrusion, uh, and he's quite better on this image. Here is her facial face, and you see that it changed a little bit, not so much. And here is when I get uh, they get the photos, like I told you, with the braces uh, already yet on her mouth. And 
I'm um, sorry if I pass the time. Uh, I'm going to finish uh, very quickly. I just wanted to say some kind of things. All those cases were made by, uh, in my view, in my uh, view, with a simply kind of uh, using uh, one or two or three accessories, like two arch wires and one bracket. Uh, so uh, this image represents what I think. This is our logo, our identity, and uh, it's how I feel about the double slot bracket because. Uh, uh, I think we just uh, reach out the surface uh, of this bracket. We have a lot to study. Actually, uh, every time I put this webinar, I search for uh, researches or scientific articles because, you know, we have to compare everything. But when you talk about two arch wires, it's so hard to, to, to find articles that talk about two arch wires at the same time and even two arch wires comparing to one arch wire. It's, it, it's almost impossible. So everything that we are doing here, it's new for us. And actually the next step of our group now is trying to respond some questions like, is there more friction or less friction? Uh, you see, uh, we have so many doubts yet. Uh, at, at the point of scientific questions, we have answers, but clinically the, the, those, those, uh, those questions there has been answers. So uh, it's by sure by the clinic uh, experience that I showed you that we can do intrusion by using two arch wires. We can do traction of canines. We can do even tractions, uh, retractions. So I think the use of two slots uh, and two arch wires independent of each other open a new uh, variety of uh, kind of uh, biomechanics. So some questions that we have like, it's better or it's uh, statistically not uh, different if we use one arch wire and comparing to two arch wires uh, to get uh, a better tip of the, the tooth. We don't know. Uh, scientifically, we don't know. We assume logically that yes, because when you have two arch wires like this, like that, you create four points of contact. So I think the control of tipping, it's better. Uh, but it's it's a logical answer. It's not scientific comproof. I don't have this answer right now. Uh, so the same goes to rotation of premolars. Like if you use one arch wire, you create two points of rotation. If you use two arch wires, like I told you, there is a time that I used to align a level to 12. It is better or it's more control. If you create four points, I don't know. We have to answer. And about uh, uh, friction. It's more friction, statistically it's equal if you use two arch wires at the same slot or two in a different slot. By logic, this generates less friction than this image, but like I told you, it's logical, it's not scientifically. Uh, when we talk about torque with one, can you produce a, a, a better control torque by using two arch wires or one? I don't know. Uh, the control of translation, it's better if you use two arch wires, rectangular arch wires, because now you are going to give two parallel forces to get the, 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 the tooth goes back. So I don't know it's more control, no, but it's all questions that we made to ourselves inside the group. Actually, there are students that call me uh, and uh, past week, they want to make some thesis about the double slot bracket and researches and uh, we are in contact along with him to trying to uh, help him, to help us to answer those, those questions about friction, control, movement, forces. So th those are questions and they are good questions that have to be answered uh, in the name of the scientific community orthodontics. So we are working and we hope uh, other colleagues could interest to work uh, on that. So summarizing, Akram and people, I'm sorry for the delay. Uh, when we use the double slot conventional bracket, you can work with any slot. You can use the 18 or the 22, just one, as you need it or as you want. Uh, you can use the bi-dimensional technique using just the one bracket. You don't have to mix any bracket. You have the two slots on the same uh, device. Uh, you can work with segmental or continuous arch or both independent slot. So you can work with a part segmental or a part segmental and continuous, two continuous. Uh, so it, it, it opened a new door for orthodontic biomechanics. Uh, you can use two arch wires simultaneously in independent slot 
and uh, in my opinion, it has less friction uh, by using two arch wires in two slots rather than use two arch wires in the same slot. It's it's by logic I'm uh, I'm answering that. Uh, you can variate the slot, like I told you. You can choose uh, by movement uh, by vertical movement without replace the bracket. So. We use a lot when you have deep bytes on open bytes that you have to put the bracket a little bit more incisal or a little bit more gingival in order to get this vertical movement. You can do that by only uh, changing the slot from one to another and you, you create a degree and this will get your movement, uh, your vertical movement without replacing the, the bracket. Uh, you can reduce, reduce or avoid the need of extra accessories. So, like I told you, uh, in those cases, I didn't use any uh, extra accessory of Anchorage, like uh, mini screws or a uh, transpalatable arch or nothing else. Uh, not that I am against, I am not. I use mini screws, I love mini screws. Uh, but uh, if I don't need to use them and get the same result, it's better for me and for my patients, more uh, comfortable. Uh, the mechanics become more simplified. Uh, I think it's more comfortable by mechanics and you have a great diversity of arch wires because like I told you, when you have two slots with size of 18 and 22, you can use uh, whatever you want, any alloy, any uh, diameter of, of arch wire as you need or as you want. So uh, by finalizing, we don't have the key to all answer. Actually, we are looking for and trying to uh, investigate and find out the puzzle and we search everything and try to find the pieces that are lacking to us and try to fit them together and get the better response to everyone, including us. So I leave you with this message of Leonardo da Vinci that simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. So I think that is uh, one of our main objective here is trying to make things simple. And like Albert Einstein said, everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler. So I think uh, that's what I'm trying to get here. Uh, do it, but make it simple. Okay, that, that is the, the proper message that I want to leave today. Think out the box. So uh, I think the, 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 this bracket opened to a new door. I hope you understand a little bit our motivation. And like I told you, I don't want to do nothing uh, differently. Just use this device uh, as the way you work and as the way you know how to work. Like I told you before, uh, it's not the bracket that make the treatment. It's the orthodontics. It's the orthodontist. So we control the, the bracket, not the other way around. We have to choose our tools uh, as we need them to solve our cases. Uh, here are all my contacts. So if you need something, here is my email. Uh, here is my WhatsApp, my Facebook, and my Instagram. I'm almost 24 and seven uh, work, uh, even in my house. Uh, I like to talk to people, so if you send me a message to WhatsApp, I reply almost immediately. Uh, and don't forget to smile, guys, every time, especially in this moment that we are living. And thank you so much for your attention. Please, sorry, excuse me for passing the time. Akram, go ahead. Thank you so much, Dr. Thar, for a wonderful lecture. I can almost, I can see so many people are happy with the lecture and they're very content with the information that they got from it. Uh, regarding time, really, we thank you for taking your valuable time <laughs> to give us uh, all the information. Uh, firstly, I, I'd like to give a remark just before I hand it over to uh, our Dr. Ammar Salim, the modulator, to handle the questions. I had a query myself. When I looked at the design of the bracket, I noticed that the 18 slot was more gingival and the 22 slot was more occlusal. Generally, we tend to place the, the major slot more gingivally to be closer to the center of resistance and at the same time for, to allow for bends to be made gingivally. And that got me confused until I noticed all your cases and you use 1725 stainless steel wire. Yeah. 
you're an 18 <laughs> slot type of person i'm so 18 you, you fan like... i am 18 slot fan <laughs> yes so that's why you made this arrangement which is yeah. nice i have no objections at all i love 1725 stainless steel wire it's a it's a hybrid it's somewhere between the 1622 and the 1925 something in between and if used on an 18 slot it's going to be very efficient and you made the 22 slot generally for low gauge wires so you have more freedom of movement so That's you have it. the best of both worlds and if somebody was to ask please, me, I would uh, think please, it was please, the Akram, It's not me. Uh, it's not me. It's my colleagues too. So I have to get this, uh, this opinion. It's them too. So it's not only me, but you are right. You are all, you are hundred percent right. Actually, once I talked to Celestino Nauberg, I, I think you all know them, uh, know him. And it's uh, in one of the, the lecture of the Celestino, he told that, uh, you know, not only he, but uh, a lot of authors say that the gap, the play that you have between the 17 per 25 and the 18 per 25. So if you use a, a 17 per 25 in a 18 slot, the play it's uh, less. So if you have to use uh, a proper arch wire to get uh, a great torque in the 22, you you have to use a 21 for for per 25. But it's a heavy arch wire. It's a a stiff arch wire. So uh, most of the orthodontists don't use 21 per 25. They use 19 per 25 in a 22 slot. So you have a big play and you have a lot of work to get the right torque on your case. And when you use a 17 per 25 in, a, in an 18, and even you can use an 18 per 25 in an 18 slot, they fit. Believe me, they fit. Okay. Uh, it seems not, but they fit. So if you use, you get the right maximum torque of your prescription. So like I told, I love the 18 slot. Yeah, I believe that 18 fit because I use a lot of bi-dimensional myself and I usually squeeze in 1925 wires inside the 18 slots. And, and they the, take a little bit of pressure, but they still go in. 18s generally go in nicely. It, the, this uh, one is, question... Uh, yeah, go, go ahead, please. Go ahead. One question I noticed was uh, that uh, somebody asked if they're bulkier. I noticed that they're not bulkier in out, but they are a little bit uh, longer gingiva occlusally. So is uh, that a concern in patients with short crowns or, uh, for example, children? Yeah, well, uh, see, I used a lot of brackets myself, like conventional one, uh, self-ligated ones. I have a lot of them. Uh, I think on the average, on the average, he has the same uh, size, uh, either mesial distal and uh, ginger, uh, incisal to the gingival, cervical incisal. So it's a little bit more, but uh, if you take the double slot bracket to those cases that you mentioned, like uh, in children's or even in uh, court uh, uh, tooth, uh, on the average, all the brackets will get the same problem, not only the double slot bracket. So on those cases, you have or to make a re-anatomy of the tooth or even use a mini uh, bracket, so a special one. But uh, it, 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 for me, on my experience, if you use the double slot bracket on, on those cases or any one bracket is self-ligated, uh, the most common ones, they will have the same problem. So it's not a great great uh, bracket so uh, uh, on average uh, the the impression that we have from the other is that they are on the limit uh, side by side comparing to the other thank you so much i'd like to invite dr amar salim kavum he's uh, an orthodontist in the baghdad Univ university of baghdad and he's the modulator of this session and he's going to handle the questions and answers please dr amar Thank you, Professor Akram. Uh, Professor Thaab, on behalf of the members of the Iraqi Orthodontic Society, uh, we would love firstly to thank you for your nice presentation. And we are very grateful for our time and uh, sharing your experience and thoughts with us. Uh, secondly, we want to express our gratitude for the valuable gift, the manual that you shared earlier. And I hope that you uh, share the link or the email I think that you 
uh, said yeah. we should uh, send the request so that we can have the cop. Okay, Dr. Thar, are you with us? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Uh, are you seeing my screen? Okay. Now it is available. I think it was your email. Yeah, this one. Tara Hamid, I hope a double slot, this one. Okay, thank you. So I hope uh, our colleagues record this email or write it down. Yeah, so you, can, you can they take can a send you a photo. request to have their copy. Of course, I'm going to yeah. give here. You can take a photo. You can. Okay. Thank you so much. So I, we had several questions. I tried to group them. Uh, so we have some questions regarding the manufacturing or processing of the bracket. Some yeah. orthodontists are interested in this part. And uh, some regarding the prescription. And finally, some questions were related to the clinical uh, work. So right. firstly, we had a question uh, is that, are these brackets manufactured by MIM, by metal injection molding only, or was it combined with CNC? I think this question was because you are combining two types of slots, the 18 and 22 slots. And we all know that with uh, MIM, there are some inaccuracies in, in the 18 and 22. So it, is it just MIM or uh, is it combined with CNC? No, actually uh, it's combined with CNC, uh, uh, the, the average. Uh, now Great. we are going to start with MIM, but uh, on the usual process is not, okay? Um, so do, doesn't worry about that. So is it by casting? Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, they, 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 it's one piece only. It's a single piece, uh, piece. Okay, uh, it's mm -hmm. not two, uh, two uh, different pieces. And CNC, it's that, it's that right. Okay, great. The second question is related to the. Uh, we have two questions related to the slot. The first one is that there is a thin metal in between the slots. Yeah. Uh, will it be enough to withstand the force generated from the wires without deformation? Yes, it is. The, this question, it's very available question and they always ask me, and yes, uh, it's necessary rough to, to maintain the stability. It doesn't worry, it, it has. Okay, this is also great. So uh, the second question regard, regarding the slots is about the distance between the two slots. I think it's, uh, if, I, if I remember well, it's something between 0 0.3 or 0 0.5. I really don't uh -huh. remember right now, I can send you. The, the distance between one and another, basically the thinner of the part that, that separate the, themselves, I think it's a, something between 0 0.3 or 0 0.7. Some, something in between. I can I can send you accurately uh, once I get the information from the the manufacturing. Much appreciated. So now we have also another question regarding slots. They are asking about the corners. Is it rounded or is it straight cut? It, it's straight cut. The, the, it's not uh, at the sides. It's it's, straight it's, cut. It's, it's it's straight cut. Okay, I think it is. Okay. They they asked uh, that because of the, the friction. Other I think. Yes, 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 definitely regarding friction. Uh, the other questions are regarding the uh, prescription. So uh, the, it is one question with the three questions inside. Okay, uh, so ahead. I said, what is the prescription that you are using? Uh, is the torque the same in both slots, the gingival and incisal? And is the torque in base or it is a torque in face? So well, actually, 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 the first question is that 99% uh, is, is rot, it's rot. Basically, it's rot. Uh, the prescription okay. is rot, okay? okay? The second question, he, he answered himself on the third question because uh, the, the torque is on the base. So uh, it doesn't matter if you use the 18 slot or the 22 slot, you have to fulfill the slot. Okay. And once you do that, he will give the torque because it's on the base. So it's the same because it's torque in base, not torque in face. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, okay. Uh, 
the second question is also regarding the torque, is that you said we can always work with single slot. So uh, I think they, they, this is the point where they have asked this question, is that working with single slot will or will not affect the torque value. Uh, this is because of the difference in, in the vertical uh, position of the slot. Yeah, because so will one it be is different more higher than the other the one. 17, yeah. 25? Yeah. So will it yeah. be different or we will have the same result? You know, exactly, exactly the same knot because they are not in the same position. So it's very hard to, to compare it. To compare it uh, if, uh, if you use the 18, there is more cervical. Normally, if you see... Uh, I think by logic, the 18 will give you more expression because they are positioned a little bit more central rather than 22. But I think this answer could be only answer with a something scientifically a cure because I think the difference clinically, it's almost none. You, you see, because yes. the, the difference between those two and uh, on the way they are on the center of the crown of the, 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 the tooth will not interfere on clinically speaking, will not interfere. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have some uh, clinical questions that, okay. uh, is there a special recommendation for bonding position? Or it is uh, the well, same, uh, just place it in the center of now, uh, the, uh, regarding the bonding, the placing, actually you use the center of the crown. The only difference is because you have two slots. When you have one slot, you, uh, you use this slot as reference to measure, okay? The distance, the vertical position of the bracket. Because you have here two slots, you have to choose between the, the 18 or the 22. So uh, it doesn't matter if you choose as reference the 18 or the 22 is there is only one rule. If in one patient you use as reference the 18 slot, you have to use on this patient every time the 18 slot as reference, okay? And the same values okay. for if you choose for one patient the 22 slot, uh, all the other tooth, all the other teeth have to be used the 22 as reference because it doesn't matter if you use as reference the 18 slot or the 22 slot, uh, at the end, all the slots will be level uh, of each other if you choose every time the same uh, slot the same on slot. your same patient, on the same patient. Uh, we have a typical bonding where we use some reference of an 18 on one side and a 22 on the other side. But I will not enter on this issue because it's a little bit more complex and take time. But it's for cases like on the uh, open bites and uh, deep bites. And this will increase a little bit the potential because uh, as you use uh, this uh, typical bonding, you can uh, make a better mechanic when you want or to extrude or to intrude the anterior uh, incisors. Uh, will this be available in the manual or, or not? The, uh, if it's not, if it's not, I think it's, I, I think it is. But if it's not, I can send you a video that I made a, a home video. Uh, it's a very good thing that I show you exactly what I talk. When when you use two different dimensions or, as reference in the same patient. Okay, thank you, thank you, Professor. Uh, the other question is, uh, according to your experience, which type of tooth movement is best done with double slot bracket? Is it intrusion, sliding, the rotation, or else? Uh, I, well, I, I have a lot of cases of, uh, uh, personally, they are very uh, borderlines. Like I have a lot of cases of, I, I didn't put here because uh, if I put, it will take four hours, but uh, I have, uh, uh, upriding of molar, verticalization of molar. I have uh, intrusion of molars and anterior tooth and traction. On the average, they are all good. I think I think the the the, the traction of canine it's it's more simple because it's a uh, it's something that we we are used to do with two arch wires. But when we open our minds to the other kind of of uh, treatment like the verticalization of molars, they are impressed because you can not only verticalize a molar, 
but also by using the variation of the slots from one uh, slot to the two, you can control the intrusion, or I'm sorry, the extrusion that occurs when you do the verticalization. So every time you do the verticalization, you have a component of extrusion of this uh, these tools. So by using the, the, the variation of the slot, I can do not only the verticalization, but I can control the extrusion or even intrude the molar. So I think they are uh, side by side, all the movement. I think uh, every movement have a particularity on this, uh, on, on their treatment. So uh, it's not about uh, if it's better movement one of another. I think the traction and the verticalization, it's more easier because you are uh, extruding the tooth and the, the intrusion, it's more difficult because it's more difficult uh, type of movement. But we, until now, we uh, uh, achieve all, always the succeed until now, because we are going to fail one day soon. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Professor. Uh, uh, this question is about uh, the leveling and alignment. It yeah. says, aren't we going to apply extra force by placing two leveling arch wires? Yeah, meaning one in each yeah, slot? Uh, this question I made myself and I, I, I got the, here's the answer. Uh, the, the problem of, uh, it's not by using one or two arch wires at the same time by your leveling or not. It's the amount of deflection that you, you do. So if you ask me, listen, if you use two rectangular arch wires, you are not generating more force when compared to one rectangular arch wire and the answer is, I don't know, but let me explain to you like this. Uh, I think you generate more force if you use one arch wire with the wrong deflection, uh, rather one, uh, rather two arch wires with the right deflection. So the answer is not on the number of wires. The answer is on the kind of the amount of deflection that you use. Maybe it will be a little bit more heavy, but is it? Uh, unphysiological? I don't know. I, I think not. I think you pointed out that we may start with a single 14 or double 12, right? Yeah. So so we can so we can use only single wire if the deflection is quite large. Yeah, and you know, and, the and deflection gets smaller. We can add the second arch wire. Exactly, uh, exactly, exactly. That's perfect. That is perfect. What you are you are working with a good sense. That that's it. What we have to get in our mind. Perfect. Thank you. So, uh, the last question. I think uh, it has not been done yet. Uh, they are asking about uh, has there been randomized clinical trials to compare its efficacy as compared to the single slot bracket? Uh, no, I'm really sorry. We, yeah, because you know, it's something new. So uh, we, uh, I, I passed this over two weeks trying to find out uh, uh, scientific articles that talk about two arch wires and they are so, uh, so uh, less of numbers. So if you work up, if you try about uh, friction, you will talk about friction in one slot, one arch wire, not two arch wires. When you search about piggyback technique, it's so uh, poor of articles. I, 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 I really find out three, four or five articles. Uh, it's like miniscrew. If you put miniscrew on the Google on every time on GCO, whenever, you will take hundreds of them. But about uh, two arch wires in the same slot talking about that, no. So we are, uh, like the pioneers, we are trying to make those randomized and clinical experience and uh, we count to every help that we have because we have to get those answers. We have to get those answers. Uh, finally, I would like to thank you, Professor Thar, for your time, for your valuable time. And uh, I think uh, today we have been introduced to a new and valuable tool to our armamentarium that we can use in the future. Uh, and the road is still long, as I see, for, for future researches regarding the lab research for uh, finite element analysis research uh, and finally clinical research. But I believe that it will uh, succeed and pass all these examinations. I, I, I really uh, thanks thank again you so for... much. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Akram. Thank you, all of you that are here. I saw that Muhammad is here that talked to me. 
I, I, I invited a lot of guys, some guys from Al Azhar University, some guys from India. I'm, I'm very glad for uh, being here today, very glad to speak to you and share a, a little bit of my experience uh, and uh, to learn with you guys. So, because I'm always trying to absorb some kind of new things. I'm very, very pleased. Shukran, shukran, Habibis. Uh, thank you so much. And I hope you see you again shukran, as soon as possible. <laughs> thank you so much. Inshallah. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot.